Hello, everybody. Welcome to Desks and Dorks, your favorite board game design and creation podcast that, as always, is shaped by you, bringing you the best in indie tabletop gaming. I'm Riley, the desk to Kyle's dork, and today we're going to be talking about Lizard Wizard by Forbidden Games. Now, Lizard Wizard did start off as a Kickstarter, though it is now available for retail. I know on their site itself, it is not, it's currently sold out. But a lot of game stores still have it, and you can get it on Amazon for as low as $40. I do, of course, recommend finding it from a local game store, but that price point variance between the $40 to the $60 of the recommended MSRP from Forbidden Games can make a huge difference, which we'll talk about in a moment. It is a heavier combination game in that it's a little bit of set collection, a little bit of bidding and push that, Um, or take that, so to speak, as well as pushing your luck. You have a dungeon deck where you can occasionally crawl through the dungeon, trying not to get attacked, but to gain as much gold as you can. You can bid on many different lizard wizards of the seven different schools of magic that are available in here. And you can pair them with their lizardy wizardy towers. Again, all paired with one of the seven schools of magic. You gain points by grouping them together. If you have a necromantic wizard, necromantic tower, you gain 10 points. If you have a necromantic wizard and a conjuration tower, you get 5 points. And if you just have either a lone wizard or a lone tower, you get 1 point from that. We have different achievements that you select four random ones at the beginning of the game and as you hit them. So it could be mana which we gain by collecting all of our different components. And I'm going to show you some of this great material included in the game. So we have our different regents and components right here with outlines. It's hard to show on camera, but outlines of the shape for the respective bin so that you know exactly where they go if you bin them out and use separate containers. As you go, you'll have different reagent cards that let you not only gather them, but also raise them up through the ranks on the charts on the board. They start off being worth one each, all the way up to 12 each. And at any point you can cash them out. So if I'm cashing in five Nightshade, the Nightshade is currently worth five. I get 25 and then it gets down to being worth one each again. As I do that, I get my mana which are signified by all of these little tokens. You got them in denominations from 1, 5, 10, 20, up to 100. Because depending on the type of game and the amount of players that you have, it can definitely go up there. I think I ended up the game with right around 100 mana, and that was with spending a whole bunch in the last two rounds. We also have our gold tokens where each one is signified by a different form of creature. We have the 10, which is like a bullywog troglodyte style frog, the crow, which is worth five, and a fox, which is worth one. Not only do you have all of these amazing components, the game trays, you have spells. So you can't be a lizard wizard without casting spells, right? You can bid mana to purchase and learn the spell. And then throughout the course of the game, as you collect reagents, or if you have them already in your little inventory, you can spend them to gain the knowledge and actually use the spell itself. Some of them are one-time spells, like this one, that lets you protect yourself from a negative spell. Some of them are a little more long-term, You have this one, which it just lasts forever, and it is you get one victory point for every seven mana. So you get points for the mana as opposed to most times in the game where they just kind of exist to be a means to an end as opposed to an end game result. That is a very brief overview of Lizard Wizard. Honestly, there's a lot more involved in that, but at the end of the day, you bid to hire your wizards, you purchase some towers, You get some spells, and you just make sure that you are the best lizard wizard and the best group of lizard wizards that you can be in comparison to your opponents. 
it is a pretty enjoyable game, I'll be honest with you, especially if you can get it for $40 with the just great quality of these components. Um, and the packaging, the trays are phenomenal. It has a really nice first player token that no wasted space when you put it in the bin. The trays have these little containers or little cutouts on, so it quite literally will sit in it between the two, bridging the gap so that you don't have to worry about anything floating around in the bin itself. If you can get it for between that $40 and $50 mark, it is a solid 8 out of 10. If you and your group like combination heavier games, something that take a little bit to learn, but that once you get down, definitely kind of help to streamline, make it super easy, I highly recommend Forbidden Games' newest thing. If you liked their one of their first games, Raccoon Tycoon, I have heard it is a very much a reskin. I have not played it, but if you prefer the fantasy animal as opposed to the Wild West animal version of the game, definitely worth checking it out. Um, this one was one that my brother, Randy, who I believe we talked about with Ubungo, and I know he's been mentioned on the show a few times, brought over and we played not that long ago. So it's definitely great to be able to play that with someone that you normally only play like Dungeons and Dragons and more role-playing games with. And it kind of fits the niche of it feels like the game we normally play, but it's definitely a different variation. So highly recommend if you can get it for a good price point. For $60, it's components are nice, but I don't know if the replayability, if you don't have that dedicated gaming group, is really going to be there, sadly. Thank you guys for taking a look at Lizard Wizard. If you like what you see, we always love a quick subscribe, a like on the video. If you're not already watching us on YouTube, you can go to youtube.com slash desksanddorks. You can, of course, uh, listen to our podcast on any of your favorite podcasting apps or sites by searching Desks and Dorks. And you can interact with us on any of your favorite social medias, like Instagram, just by searching us on there. Thank you, guys. And if you're a fan of one-shot role-playing games where you build your character up by losing what makes you, you, as your facets are worn away by the rain, you can check out After the Rain on Itch.io. In the link below, it is now for sale in digital versions, and we are looking at some physical distribution now that the Kickstarter is fully fulfilled. Thank you all, and you have a nice day.